Today is the 22nd of November. I've just returned from over two weeks in Marrakesh attending COP22. And I'm going to give an overview of the COP uh, as a whole. Uh, it was meant to be the implementation COP, having Paris Agreement done last year. Uh, and it was supposed to have been a low-key COP, but it turned into a fairly high-key one uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, on the 4th of November, we had the Paris Agreement come into force. Uh, and that was uh, within less than 12 months of the agreement being signed on the 12th of December last year, which is record speed for an international agreement to come into legally binding force. Uh, and so that was a good sign that kicked us off to a good start at COP22. Uh, but then a few days later, on 8th of November, we had the elections in America, and then when we woke up on the 9th of November in Marrakesh, the total uh, set of COP negotiators were in complete disarray. We had not expected the result, uh, and I think perhaps the American negotiators were the most startled and, and uh, unprepared for what came next. So there was a lot of speculation as to what a President-elect Trump might do on the climate change front. The Americans went into a huddle. It took them some time to recover and come out of it. Uh, but by the second week of the COP, we did come out of it, and everybody rallied, all the countries agreed to go ahead without uh, even if the United States decided to withdraw under President-elect Trump. And even the American negotiators uh, got their wind back and they came back and said that the United States has signed on to the Paris Agreement and would abide by international law. As far as they were concerned, the negotiators representing the Obama administration that was still in place. And so we had a, a, a tremendous amount of rallying in the second week and I think at the end uh, the uh, outcome of the Climate Vulnerable Forum countries, which now number 48 countries, some of the most vulnerable countries in the world, to collectively agree to go 100% uh, renewable by 2050, and in many cases before 2050, perhaps by 2030, was really the major outcome of action taking place at, on the ground and not just words and negotiations. So in a very real sense, COP22 marks a turning point in the whole history of the COPs of the UN Framework Convention, where we're no longer talking about action, but we are now going into action. And one of the things that I wrote about and talked about while I was there is the uh, notion of uh, having future COPs become what I call inside-out COPs, where the implementers are given center stage, those that are doing things, and the negotiators are uh, left to the background and in the periphery to negotiate in the side event rooms uh, over commas and brackets and words that really don't really have much significance anymore now that actions are taking place all over the world. And one of the m most important actions that are taking place are by some of the large developing countries, particularly China, who have continued to insist that they will abide by their part of the agreement in the Paris Agreement and they will do what they can and so have other developing countries like India, Brazil, South Africa and of course the, the most vulnerable countries as well. So that is a very very good sign that countries are willing to go ahead, not only willing, they want to go ahead and they're doing it for their own reasons and no longer because there is some, some agreement and not everybody is part of that agreement. So now, from now on, coalitions of the willing taking actions are going to supersede the negotiations where everybody has to agree to everything and they can be held up by the slowest common denominator or the country that doesn't want to have action. And so negotiations now have moved to the periphery and actions have moved to the center stage.